Yeah, so thanks for the introduction and also hello from my side. I want to talk about a project that I've been working on for last half a year about, but it's still in progress, and that's a template-based code generation approach for MLIR. And to give you an idea and also to motivate the whole thing and give you some background, I want to take you into how we initially uh, discovered the topic and came up with the idea. And that began with the copy and patch compilation paper by Juan Xu and Frederick Kjolstad, which was presented at Uppsala 21. And they basically propose a very efficient implementation of a template-based code generation approach. Just for those not already familiar with the template-based code generation, let me quickly introduce it. So consider a mathematical input formula like this matrix multiplication followed by an addition. Uh, like the conventional way of generating code for that with using LLVM would be just to do come up or generate some LLVM IR that does the computation that we wanted to do and then throw some optimization passes at it and eventually invoke the code generation backend to derive some native code. What template-based code generation does differently here is that it looks at the whole thing from kind of a higher level perspective. It also assumes that we already have binary templates for certain operations in our domain. This would be, of course, the matrix multiplication and the matrix addition. So for a new input sequence, then uh, compiling or generating native code basically comes down to just uh, basic uh, starting from the input sequence to match each instruction to the respective prepared template that we already have and assembling those templates together to one native uh, program. In our case, this would be like yeah, a matrix multiplication template kind of followed by a matrix addition template. And then I also, just for completeness, uh, I also added a returning of the return matrix uh, here in that visualization. Of course, this uh, is a very high level view, but I hope you get the idea. We skipped over a lot of the details. For example, you have to come up with some kind of convention, how you pass values between those templates and so on. But I guess you got a rough idea and also the, the advantages are pretty obvious already because this is very fast compared to uh, the first approach. And if done right, also the code is pretty good that got produced. So uh, referring to the paper, they only report a 24% slowdown on their code compared to LVM02, which is pretty impressive. However, this all comes at a cost. As I said, uh, we kind of assume that the templates have been there already. But of course, you have to implement them. And that's like the main work. You have to handcraft those uh, template implementation apart from doing everything right, as I just mentioned. And then another downside, at least when done this way, is that there is no integration with LLVM at all. So if you want to fall back to LLVM for fully optimized compilation, you basically have to re-implement the first approach. And yeah, we were now thinking about uh, how can we take advantage of those uh, benefits and apply it to a different DSL or something without having to spend this implementation effort over and over again for each DSL. And here MLIR kind of comes in handy I guess we do not really need an introduction on MLII here. But what is important uh, for the template-based code generation idea is that usually custom instructions have lowering to LLVM IR. Might be that there are multiple dialects in between, but you usually can come down to LLVM IR just to be able to execute the instruction. And what our idea here is now to automatically use this existing lowering for an MLIR instruction to derive a template for that instruction that can then be used with template-based code generation to generate code for inputs uh, instruction sequences of that, like containing instructions that we have templates for. And here again, the advantages would of course now be that this is easily extendable to all kinds of DSLs. There are already a lot of DSLs out there using MLIR because MLIR is out there for quite some time already. And what is also very important is that you could now have like one MLIR in pro program and in parallel either go like the, the conventional way of the MLIR compiler framework and do LVM optimized compilation. And on the other uh, side, without additional, or like only the additional effort has to be spent on a template-based code generation as a whole to then do template-based code generation for an input program. So we would also get rid of the additional implementation effort if we want to use LVM. Uh, the only uh, problem here, or let's call it a challenge, is how to actually do this. Because the uh, semantics of an instruction are only kind of loosely defined in the lowering. And here, like, our idea is to uh, put each MLIR instruction that you want to have a template for 
into a function, then apply the default lowering on that function and kind of get so the lowering from MLIR to LVMIR and then get like the returned LVMIR function as the template for that MLIR instruction. You, of course, during that lowering have to provide some abstraction for the kind of the outline of the instruction because there are some things you do not want to hard bake into your template kind of like the most obvious is the input. You would not uh, like to have the input hard baked into it, but rather want to be able to specify a memory location then during final code generation where the instruction should put it input from. Same applies for the, the output, so where to write the output to. Other things that you might have to consider here are regions, uh, block arguments, terminator operands, and so on. But yeah, for this talk, I will stick to in and outputs. I guess this is uh, complicated enough. What is more interesting here is actually the limitations. Where does this not work? And the biggest problem here is that it's impossible to uh, provide an abstraction for attribute values. That means it's impossible to derive the relation between an attribute value and the code. And the only thing we can here do is to generate one instance for each attribute value assignment. Then the second uh, limitation is, of course, we can only apply this approach if the MLIR instruction can be lowered in itself, kind of. So you do, do not need any additional external information for that. For example, other like the outside block addresses or scopes or something. But actually, most of the uh, dialects adhere to at least uh, the second limitation. And yeah, uh, if uh, they do not adhere to the limitations you had, at least for those, provide a handcrafted version then. Here we can now have a look at the LVMIR for an add, so an automatically derived uh, template for the add instruction. What you see on top are three external symbols. We'll use their addresses inside our template as an arbitrary constant because it allows to later resemble the linking mechanism and place kind of an arbitrary constant into our binary. Yeah. Then you also see the outline function, which basically gets one input that's a pointer to memory just to be able to reference memory. And for an addition, what you now had to do is like load the operands from memory. And this is done by a basic offsetted load. So we would load from the memory pointer at the specific, specific offset. And as I said, we use the address of those external symbols as offsets so we can patch them in kind of during linking or instead of linking. We do not really do linking. Then we uh, would do the actual operation, in our case an addition, and store back the result. That's straightforward, I guess. What is interesting now is that we do not return from that function normally because it would be inherently hard to combine them later this way. We instead do a tail call because this massively simplifies the like stitching together the templates during code generation then. Starting from that LVMIR of the templates, you could now apply all kinds of optimizations on them. I do not want to go into detail due to the restricted time slot here, but rather look at, look at some uh, numbers for two applications where we tried out our approach and evaluated it with respect to compile time and execution time compared to the LVM optimization levels. And the first chosen example here is ONX MLIR, which basically allows to uh, generate native code for ONX machine learning models with MLIR, of course. And there are multiple dialects involved usually, and you have a multiple step lowering. But what we did instead is kind of uh, start from the most upper level dialect, so right away from ONXIR, and directly kind of jump to native code with our approach, skipping all the lowering pipelines. Of course, this misses out on all possible optimizations that could have happened throughout that lowering. You also see an example of the input program here on the right. And I left out a lot of the lengthy types and attributes, because the thing you should take away from is that there are only very few instructions, actually, that do very powerful computations. And we then evaluate the whole thing on a ResNet model because it's like big enough to have some effect and I guess widely adopted in the community. And here you can see like compile time and runtime comparisons for our approach compared to the LVM optimization levels. Runtime here is a single inference on the model and compile time basically is the compile time of the model, but as machine learning compiler frameworks are not designed with the compilation time as a concern, this compile time actually only refers to the time it takes from LLVMIR down to native code. 
So the MLIR lowerings would add around additional 10% to all the LVM optimization levels. And yeah, what is impressive here is that we are kind of three orders of magnitude faster than all the LVM compilation levels on compile time, while still being not that slow on execution time. So only two times slower than LVM02, and interestingly, even two times faster than LVM00. So in this case, we completely dominate LVM00. This huge uh, impact is probably due to the ResNet model only having a few hundred instructions on ONXIR level and exclusively linear control flow, of course, while on LVMIR level, there are thousands of instructions with deeply nested loops. Therefore, let's look at a slightly different example, and that's LingoDB. Uh, LingoDB is a database query execution engine built around MLIR. And it takes SQL as input and then applies different lowerings down to native code where you can then execute the query. What we did here is we only replaced the very final lowering. Again, you see an example of the code on the right. And you see this is already pretty close to LVMIR, more or less. There are only basic instructions in here, so structured control flow is there, then arithmetics, things some function calls into the C++ runtime, and yeah, a few custom instructions left, for example, this util load here, which is basically a typed version of get element pointer to get the value from an element inside a tuple. And this one uh, was uh, evaluated on the TPCH queries with scaling factor 0 0.1. Again here, runtime and compile time for running all and compiling all the TPCH queries. Here the numbers look a bit different. The first thing is that we are now only, so to say, one to two orders of magnitude faster than LVM optimization levels, um, with the trade-off of being two to three times slower on execution. There's also a good way to, here's also like, this also outlines again the current work, work in progress status of the project, as there is no inherent reason why our approach should be so much slower at least an LVM 0 So I'll definitely continue working on that to get kind of the blue dot down to the level of the green one. But uh, nonetheless, this is still uh, impressive, I would say, because considering the TBCH scaling factor 0 0.1, this means that our approach takes only half the time to compile and execute all of the queries than the default for LingoDB, which would be uh, 02. And then there is only basically one question left that you might have asked yourself already, and that is <laughs> which templates do we actually generate ahead of time? We just assumed they were there. And like the simple answer that we also, what was originally given by the copy and patch compilation paper, and that we also kind of assume throughout the presentation so far is that we just, just did that for all possible cases. This was shown to be, yeah, doable in the paper uh, for two approaches or two uses cases, namely WebAssembly and something similar to LVMIR. But nonetheless, we see some cases where this uh, might not be really possible or at least not desirable. And here we want to envision another approach or operation mode, and that's kind of the on-demand compilation, where you, as a first consequence, this would enable very fine-grained caching of code Again, considering the LingoDB example, we would now be able to cache query plans on a kind of template level. And then as an additional step, we could take advantage of the very good uh, integration with the LVM pipeline and kind of come up with an uh, adaptive optimization pipeline by reusing the LLI interpreter and LLC as an optimizing compiler kind of built around the copy and patch compilation idea. And yeah. With that, let me quickly summarize what I've been talking about. So uh, I was, oh, I hope I was able to show that template-based compilation allows for very fast compilation, and it's a pretty cool idea. However, there are some significant downsides. That's also why it was never really adopted in a wider field. And I hope I also was able to show that you can actually address this problem with uh, using MLIR to automatically derive templates for the MLIR instruction. And also, although the optimization ceiling is by far not reached yet, the numbers already look uh, pretty promising. And yeah, there is still some work to do on this until this could be used productively. 
but if you would get basically a template-based compilation for free as soon as you implement your custom DSL in uh, MLIR framework. Yeah, this would be a huge step to establish a template-based compilation in that field and benefit from its advantages. And I guess that's it. I'm open for any further questions. Yes, uh, if you have a question, uh, please come to the microphone in the middle of the room. Um, and I actually have one as well, which is, you've, you showed the Onyx, right? But I assume that for machine learning, like this probably doesn't make sense end to end, right? Like the gain in compile time probably isn't sort of significant if you were to look at it end to end, right? Do you think there are examples though where like the slowdown in runtime is counteracted by especially like sort of like a just-in-time compilation uh, speed up like where you actually make it faster in reality right which i guess for machine learning probably doesn't happen right? yeah i have to admit of course this machine learning example is completely made up and it's not really useful for an end-to-end -end perspective but i guess it's like powerful enough to show the power of the approach kind of um and yeah for the just-in-time case i guess then LingoDB is like really a case where this is going to make, as I said, all the TPCH queries, if you are a user and you would like to execute all of them, yeah, well, you probably would only execute one by one, but nonetheless, you kind of now have a speed up of a factor of two. And that's just because we are able to compile a lot faster than LLVM is able to. And yeah, for those all those just-in-time cases, this is like the target, the main target of the idea. Cool, thank you. Uh, any other questions? I'm Otherwise. also... I'm also very happy for feedback on the idea or just on how to yeah, work onwards on it. Otherwise, yeah, uh, let's thank our speaker again. And...